Welcome to The Dennis Report. I'm Dennis Acheson, and this is an episode of As I See It. Shortly after the provincial election, Jacques Portras of CBC did a three-minute clip which went through social media, some 50,000 views now, where he portrayed our legislature based on the results from the last election in a particular way. He had red dots on one side and blue dots on the other side and moved some green dots over here and some purple dots over here and did a lot of speculating. His conclusion at the end of the three minutes was that it's a mess. As I watched it, I wonder, what's the point of your perspective on claiming or making a statement that it's a mess? When, in fact, it's very, very clear. You go back to the voters. And the voters moved in such a way that they said they've had enough with politics as usual in this province. They were tired of the red and blue, back and forth, nothing looks any different, and everything is still controlled by people behind the scenes leveraging governments for their particular will. By voting in the People's Alliance and the Green Party with three seats each, and by voting in greater numbers combined with those who chose not to vote because they saw that as a form of protest because nothing changes in this province, why should I bother to vote? Emotionally, you can connect those who voted for purple, green, and orange and independent candidates with those who chose not to vote and their numbers are greater than the combined numbers that voted for red or blue. And that now has to be reflected in our legislature, that value system, not a artificially manufactured alignment of red and blue and green and purple. That is not what people voted for. And it's a huge breakthrough, and I want us to capture the moment that we're in because something has shifted. And media keeps wanting to put it back in the same old familiar box of red and blue. It would be unauthentic for People's Alliance or the Green Party to side with any one of the other two red or blue sides. Because that is not what their supporters voted for. And it'll look something like this. So Mr. Portress has all these dots and better graphics because he's got better budget and all. But here's blue on one side and red on the other side. And he had, oh, green might align over here and maybe People's Alliance lines over there, but People's Alliance have said from the get-go, they're just gonna go issue by issue. And they've been consistent that way. And putting Green Party over with the Liberals in order to create a majority and there's one seat uh, advantage, but then the Speaker of the House, maybe that makes a difference. And we'll bring in the Speaker here. Here's the Queen's representative. That's a Queen from a chess set. But he forgot to mention that the Green Party, as well as People's Alliance, allows their members to vote independently, to vote on behalf of the desires and passions of their constituents. So you can't take all three green and stick them on one side and say that's going to hold. And that is not the process and how it works. Here's the new configuration, if you can get your head around it. You've got red on one side, blue on the other side, no matter who's in charge in terms of the old traditional mindset of politics. And then you've got six on the other end, and you've got the speaker. You're almost close to a circle conversation where the balance of power is shared amongst all of the parties, and they have a responsibility to get along. Remember, the original structure of our legislature is independent candidates. I have no idea how Mr. Portress would get his head around that, given that he thinks it's only one or two colors. Imagine 49 independent candidates responsible for making the province work. The conversations would be phenomenal in the shared resources, shared knowledge, shared brain power, shared intent on how to move the province ahead. Now, there's one piece missing. First Nations needs to be part of this conversation because we are here with their permission. And that never once came up during the election. And it needs to be remembered because it gives us ground. And it also gives us process. Because once you add that to the conversation, you're very close now to a circle. And circular conversations in the large-scale consensus decision-making process that is today's politics because of a new outcome in an election could move our province forward in such a way that allows us to finally adapt 
and cope with the changes that are coming over the next 20, 25 years. Food systems are going to change. Transportation is going to change. Population shifts are going to change. And our environment is going to change. Can we grab, in 2018, respect for the voters' choice and build a legislature that is inclusive, works in a circular mindset, and teaches us that leadership can be done in another way? Thanks for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other.